There are two, two symbols that have always touched my heart very deeply in the Christian story, at least two, but... And there is this moment on the cross when Christ cries out, O oh God, O oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? And anybody who's walked the mystic path knows this is the knows this incredible piercing agony of seeming complete betrayal. It's called the Dark Night of the Soul by St. John of the Cross. And it is that moment before spiritual death and rebirth. And it's this it says in the Sufi tradition there comes a time when the the teacher turns all appearances against him and you feel you have been betrayed, you have been abandoned and it is to me deeply meaningful that that is so present in the Christian story. And then after that there is what over the years I've come to find the, for me the most deeply meaningful scene in the Christian story which is when Mary Magdalene comes to the empty tomb and this is after the crucifixion and she comes to the empty tomb and there is a man there and she mistakes him for a gardener and he says these lines to her that just go straight to the depths of my heart and of course she cries, the tomb is empty, God is, her Christ, her beloved is gone and he says, why, woman, why weepest thou? And she looks at him and she suddenly recognizes him. And she says, Rabboni, which means teacher. And in this little exchange, there is a whole mystery that the Christian church covered up as quickly as it could within a few centuries. And they couldn't deny that that was in the story. But in this meeting by the empty tomb, there is first and most important, there is the, it is the, the feminine, it is Mary Magdalene who is the first to see the risen Christ. And if you think of the whole patriarchy of the church, and yet it is the receptive feminine who comes to the empty tomb, who meets the risen Christ for the first time. And in Sufism, we, we are taught this, we are taught about the, the need to be receptive, the need to be waiting, we are always waiting, we are always receptive. You have to learn patience. It's one of the most difficult things to learn on the part. You wait and you wait and you wait, and you are always somehow there at the empty tomb. And there, eventually, you meet this miracle within you of divine rebirth. The, the risen Christ and it is one of the great mysteries that was covered over great symbolic statements that was covered over as quickly as possible by the patriarchal church the fact that it was the feminine it was the woman there and then for me in my tradition this meeting also when she says Rabboni which means teacher because in that one word there is again something the Christian church covered over, which is the esoteric relationship of the teacher and disciple. And it is forgotten that Christ was a spiritual teacher and he had disciples. And, you know, there is the whole tradition that, that he was um, trained by the Essenes in Egypt and then returned to do his work as a teacher. And, of course, y you can't have an institution with that relationship because it's a very intimate individual relationship of teacher and disciple and it was present there in the early Christianity which meant it was a living mystical esoteric tradition that was given because these things are given and then like I say we have forgotten so much and then it was quite deliberately forgotten as the church chose political power, worldly power over spiritual truth. And yet it's there, there are, again, these are seeds. And it's, I always think, what are the seeds we are going to remember? What are the seeds that really matter? And there are many seeds in the Christian story. 
The Sermon on the Mount is incredibly beautiful from an esoteric point of view and he talks about blessed are the poor in spirit, which has to do with the whole deep meaning of spiritual poverty. Um, Rumi says, last night my teacher taught me the lesson of poverty, having nothing and wanting nothing, which is, was there in, in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the poor in spirit. But for me those are the two things, there is this <coughs> On the, the mystical journey, there is this moment of this cry of desperation, O oh God, O oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? This cry of the heart, it's the most terrible cry you can ever make, which he cried on the cross. And then afterwards there is this incredibly beautiful meeting that contains within just a couple of sentences a whole esoteric tradition of the teacher and disciple and the love that is there. Woman, why weepest thou? And then suddenly she recognizes him. And, and that's the whole story. <laughs>